Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Today in History. And um, I'm going to be sharing with you something that happened in 1999 in Niger Republic. It is on this day in 1999 that the president back then was assassinated. Um, but this time, assassinated by men of his uh, soldiers from his own presidential guard. His name was uh, President... What's his name now? President Ibrahim Bari Menasara. He was assassinated by his own presidential guard while boarding a plane in Niamey, the capital of Niger. Immediately after the incident, communication lines, radio stations, and borders were closed, and the troops well positioned around Niamey cordoned off the international airport. He was eventually buried about two days after his death. Um, Ibrahim Bari Menasari was a military officer and a diplomat in Niger who ruled the country until his assassination during the military coup on this day in 1999. He was ambushed and shot to death by soldiers, reportedly members of the presidential guard at the airport. Uh, there's been numerous conversations about the circumstances of uh, the killing and the reason behind his killing. Uh, some people say he was attempting to flee the country because of political turmoil that was currently um, existing at that time. But it is still not clear. There, of course, was also an investigation into his death that began in June 1999. But following amnesty, um, it ended sometime in September. And that was uh, the end of his short reign. He, he initially had took, taken over power in 1996, um, you know, of course, taking advantage of also chaos and the turmoil that was going on in the Nigerian Republic at that time. Um, and, um, you know, only was able to be president for about three years before his assassination. Um, and um, that's really what, you know, the, most of the story is. You know, I'm just really, really shocked as to how, um, you know, a president can be killed by his own presidential guards. It shows really the level of, you know, division and the level of, of you know, of crisis and turmoil that existed at that time in um, Niger Republic. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm guessing a lot, you know, also had to be learned from that with mm -hmm. constitution of presidential guards after that, um, after that uh, incident. Indeed, Osaogi. And uh, going back to the second story about an assassination or, or murder, it happened this day in history, April 9, 1984. What happened today in history was that a man attempted to kill his wife for money using a car bomb. So her name was Margaret Blackhouse. She turned the ignition of her car and uh, the car exploded. Her you know, legs and buttocks were badly damaged. She didn't die, thank God. You know, police had initially suspected that her husband was responsible for the you know, murder or the attempt on her life, basically. But the husband had accused a neighbor of his, saying the neighbor had written, you next, you know, at the back of their farm basically trying to implicate the neighbor. So police put the husband on a 24-hour watch, but eventually the, he, the police left the house and uh, he killed the neighbor later on, saying that the neighbor had come to the house to fix furniture. It was a whole long, long story, but he killed his neighbor anyway. Then during a series of investigations, police found that the you next you know, notes that had been written in the farm was similar. That's the you next written there. I'm showing on the screen, it was similar to the writing of the husband found during investigation. And uh, it was eventually revealed that he had attempted to kill his wife. He confessed that he had debts of about 70,000 uh, euros and his wife had about 50,000 euros in life insurance. So he wanted to kill his wife with a car bomb, get the life insurance money to pay his debts. That it's sounds impressive. really weird. But I'm telling you, this happens. I see the movies all the time. People try to kill their partner, you know, for their life insurance money. So that's what happened. But good thing, the wife, her name is uh, Margaret Backhouse. She, she didn't die. She just had some injuries. And, uh, you know, the guy was found to have, to have been responsible. And she, she eventually died in her sleep later on in March 1955 when she was, you know, 48 years old. And the guy got what he deserved. His name was Graham Backhouse, killing his jail? wife for money. Yes, yes he did. Okay. He, was, he was found guilty of murder and the attempted murder of his neighbor and the attempted murder of his wife and he received two life sentences. Okay, but yeah, and this was what, 1950? 1950, 
uh, 19, I beg your pardon, 1984. 84. 1984. So, so, so what, I'm, what I'm pointing out here is, as, you know, as far back as 1984, and even earlier, there was um, already the use of graphology, which is the analysis of handwriting with, um, you know, police investigation and forensic investigation in the United States, um, which is not shocking uh, to me, but these are some of the things that we would have loved to see with investigations here in Nigeria, with murder investigations, with arson, with, you know, what's going on in Imo State, with what's been going on in Nigeria in the last 10 years with regards to insurgency, with following the money and finding out who's sponsoring Boko Haram and who's sponsoring all these banditry and Because no matter what, the country, there's always a trace. In there is always fruit, a trace. In footprints, yes. something. So, um, I don't know if we would ever get, you know, graphology experts into, you know, our system or that level of forensic investigation into our system, but it's necessary. The investigation here, you know, should not only come with slaps and kicks and, and you know, and um, torture. That's not with the only iron way to on get, your back and exactly. forcing you that into confess, to, confessing what you never did. Shouldn't be the only way to get um, um, confessional statements or to get um, evidence of a crime being committed. Um, and also, yes, um, Having to murder your wife so you can get uh, money, sure no, that's money. Enti entirely crazy. Terrible, terrible. Well, best of luck to him. I've, I've also had a story of a, a woman. Best of luck to him. <laughs> I've had a story of a woman who uh, contracted a, a um, hitman who was an undercover FBI agent wow. uh, to kill her husband. Yes. <laughs> so right. just to quickly throw it in, no means to shade, but this is just fact. Mm -hmm. I attended a police training event a few days ago and... Uh, heads of security agencies in Nigeria were all there. And we're talking about how we need to really step up our investigation and how you go and re report a rape case. Maybe somebody who's disabled, you know, goes to report a rape case in the police station and the police will tell you, um, you're not even happy somebody wants to have relations with you. Or that, you know, a family member had kind of knowledge of a child and the police will tell you that they have orders from above that this is a family matter. When evidence is there, you can see the bleeding, you can see force, you can see bites, you can, every, like all the evidence you need to prosecute that case is glaring in the face. And it's tell you it's a family matter or you should be happy that somebody finds you attractive. Well, it's not, it's not you know, because they, they lack evidence at a time like that. It's because no, they, 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 choose the to, they choose to not, you know, dwell or delve into uh, marital issues or, you know. Don't, don't um, say I'm, what I'm, they're saying, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you why they, why they give those excuses. It's, of there's, course there's it's entirely wrong. There's a police acts, there's the VAP, there's, you know, there are lots of laws that criminalizes things like this. The issue is implementation. When if you go to and if you go to the police station, the laws, if you go to the police station and report physical abuse between you know um, from a spouse, that's the, most likely the same reaction that you get. But that's that wrong. That's what matter. we're saying. Oh, it's wrong. It's absolutely There's wrong. Nothing like I'm not, family I'm not, affairs. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you what the experience would be if you yeah. go to the Nigerian police station because you know they've really been on that level of laziness. And um, they don't understand what their responsibilities truly are. And you're tempted to police. think maybe these men are even guilty of the same crime because what's, what then is the conscience to prosecute such if you're guilty? I mean, really, it, it, leaves, it leaves room for lots of, ex of explanation because why would somebody report a rape case and you make, oh my God, it's just disheartening. Well, I have a long way to go. Yes, we do have a long way to go. Stay with us. Uh, our first major conversation for today is uh, talking proliferation of arms and illegal arms across Nigeria. Uh, former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar mentioned there's uh, as many as six million illegal weapons across Nigeria today. We're going to be speaking with uh, Kabira Damo, a security analyst, um, right after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs> 